Hello, can you hear me? Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening, lady. How are you? Um, not so good, in fact. I'm sick. You're sick. What do you have? Um, a terrible cough. I am sorry to hear that. Yeah. Okay. It but... started since Monday, so I am getting worse day by day. Instead of I take, I'm taking medicine. And for some women, it's kind of, I don't know, so difficult for me because um, it's kind of really, really um, uncomfortable. Yes, I, I can imagine that. Have you, mm -hmm. have you taken any medicine or anything like that? Yes, I am taking some chamomile tea and also um, taxi root, but... I feel that they are not working good on my body. So I'm planning, I'm planning going to the doctor tomorrow. Yeah, that would be the best thing because if you have this since Monday and it's not getting better, yeah. probably it's a yeah. virus or an infection. You don't the know, right? The that I am getting worse day mm -hmm. by day. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So that that's the problem. Yes, it, it's better to go to the doctor and you will know yes. what you have. Yes. Yes, so sorry to hear that. <laughs> we are but going anyway. to Yeah, anyway, uh fortunately, we are not going to speak today, right? Yes. We, are, we are just going to listen and we are going to prepare for for speaking next week. Hopefully next week you will you will be recovered. Yeah, I hope to be better the next week. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we are going to wait a little bit because I don't want anybody to miss this. Yeah. Class. And Last night I entered so late, so today I try to enter early. It's, uh, here in my town is raining. Mm -hmm. This caused a little problem with the internet. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Yes, yes. Uh, but I guess that we practice a little bit, right? You practice a little bit of, of the listening. Uh, today it was planned to practice, but I said before I don't feel really well. And I couldn't, I couldn't hear uh, the more I'm planning to, to be like. Right. How oh. do you say uh, al día? How do you say? Uh -huh. How can I say al día? Al día. Uh -huh. Like what, what, what are you trying to say? Estar al día con los platforms and all the exercises. Ah, you have to be up to date. With up all the yeah, 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 up to date. Was yeah, you have to be up to date. Mm -hmm. But you finished the, the, the listening part, right? The last one. Yes, the 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 part from the platform. No, no, no. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, not yet. Yeah, because this is just for you to practice. Yeah, yeah. This is the. Yeah, this is the speaking practice. We are going to talk about a little bit about the speaking practice today. Mm -hmm. So you can be prepared for next week. We are going to talk about a little bit about that. And also I will give you some information. I will send the information to the group, to the WhatsApp group. Also some books so you can use uh, for keeping practicing about listening, right? Well, we are like sending us like topics in order that we prepared uh, before. Or oh, we are gonna have like some ideas on the platform. I don't know. I, I don't For know. the speaking part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll give you some topics so you can prepare, right? Because you have to prepare with different, uh, different topics, different ideas, and uh, I will give you some of them on a Monday. 
so you can prepare yourself and you can investigate and you can have an appropriate answer because you will be speaking and you will be talking and you will be providing all, all the, your ideas and opinions. So you have to know a little bit of those topics, but I will give you that on Monday. Okay, today we have uh, here at the end of the presentation, I will share this presentation also with you. Uh, we have three listenings. One is 45 minutes. Another one is, minutes. yeah, 45 minutes. But they, they, they it's are- It's a long listening. It's a, no, it's a practice. It's like you have shorts, right? Short, short parts. And uh. then you have questions. It's not that 40, 45 minutes just listen, right? And this one is with timing. This is the one that we are going to do. And this one is just like a, a, a mock test. It's like you you record your, you, you listen to the to the audio. Mm -hmm. and you start practicing. You listen to the audio and you start like providing uh, information. And then at the end, you get points for that. So at the end of the presentation, you can also practice with that if you want to. But uh, let's see. I think that we are. You are the only one connected right now. Okay. Let me see here. By the way, uh, <laughs> yesterday someone from the corporation uh, was sending me some messages and told me that we have to wait until the next year to continue with the next model uh, for preparation too. For the preparation for the TOEFL mm -hmm. or? Yes. So I understand that there are three models mm -hmm. that, we, that we can take from, from this um, part. So we're gonna finish the model one, but we, if we want to continue, we have to wait until the next year. Okay. Yeah, probably that. I didn't know that. So you need to wait a little bit, right? Until next year. But it's not that long, right? It will be like two or three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that much. Okay, good evening, Marielos. Are you there? Yes, teacher, but I have a problem. With the camera. With Zoom. I don't know. The Zoom is, is a problem. Yesterday, they actually, I don't know, <laughs> the, the platform. <laughs> Yes, um, exactly. They are doing some changes. I can, I, yes, I can see your, your screen. Um, I don't know. <laughs> right. I am, okay, yeah, but you're not able to see my screen? No. Okay. But uh, yesterday I I could to see that I see the screen after 10 or 15 minutes okay so probably it's a problem with yeah it's probably with zoom because it updated yesterday so probably you're having some problems with it mm -hmm. i'm so sorry for that but fortunately today you're not going to read anything you're just going to listen right so if you're okay. able to listen that will be okay and okay. fortunately probably uh after some time uh let's see that let's say Let's see if you are able to to see the, the screen. If you are not able to see the screen, let me know, okay? Okay, um, I I couldn't listen uh, the, the first part yesterday. <laughs> you, can, you couldn't listen to the first part? Yes. Yes, if you have any problem or anything, we will try to fix it, right? Because, um, so let me know if you have any problem, if you are not listening to it, or if you cannot see the screen, because probably you will have uh, important information there. And actually this information, I will I will send it to you at the end of, well, probably tomorrow. I will send you, this is a book. You have like some questions, anatomy and physiology question, astronomy question, chemistry, chemistry question, psychology question, sociology, biology. A lot of topics, right? So you will be able to, to check it. You will be able to listen here. You just click here and you will be as, able to listen to, to the audio and this will be the, the answers, like the questions, right? And at the end, okay. you will have the answers. So that is just an extra. And also this is a, another test. 
for the listening section. And you will be able also to, to listen. And then you will have questions, right? It will be with conversations and lectures. So this will be for you, okay? This you for you to practice. Just okay. some materials. Okay, good evening, Sarah, Maritza, Sirhan. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Thank you, teacher. Okay, you? are you ready? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Hi, good evening. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. And you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking, Sarah. Uh, are you ready for the last day for the listening? For listening yes. practice? Yes, yes I'm right. ready. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So we are going to have a uh, practice today. It will be with time. Hi. And uh, you are going to you are going to listen and then answer, right? Listen. We are going to have like four listenings, but it will be continuous. They will be continuous. Okay, so okay, perfect. Let's see who else is here. Good evening, Katya. How are you? Good evening, fine, teacher. Um, okay. I'm a little tired. <laughs> a little tired, yeah. I can't imagine that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, but this is the last day. Tomorrow, no classes, okay? So you can uh, rest, you can uh, relax, you can yes and you will have the weekend for you to rest also if you can do it right so i was explaining that i will send you this information to the group these are like two pdf books for listening practice so you have 100 uh, questions and another one is a listening practice with conversations and also lectures and today we are going to do another practice but this will be with time it's not going to be short time, right? It's, they are going to give you like 30 seconds for you to answer the question. So try to read it and try to understand what they are asking. If you have any problem, if you cannot listen to the conversation or the audio, or if you are not able to, to see the screen, let me know because you will have to do it. You will have to see the screen and, and listening clearly, right? So you won't have any problem. Let's see. We're just waiting for the rest. Teacher, when is the end date to to do the midterm? Today, today, uh, Hi, today. actually, yeah, today is the. Let me see the platform because I had the platform here. Let me see here. I will share with you. I have problems with the 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 question that you have to to complete. Yes, exactly. So uh, we have to do this uh, section, section two, the listening section, and the mid midterm, right? One one question. Did you complete this part already? Yes, I complete the, the midterm, but, but only the one that you select the question. Uh, because the, 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 to complete the questions, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, these ones. Yes. These two, you didn't mention the two types three. of listening questions. We have gone over in this course, type mm -hmm. in three words, which are used in inference questions. So you complete all of these, and this one you didn't complete also. What does the listening no. section of the TOEFL mm -hmm. test measure? Okay, let me see here. Did you have a, a I, problem? I have tried, but uh, I, I, it's bad. Always. It's wrong always. Uh, did you did you did you have problems also with that? Me, teacher. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's go into review. Let's see for you to practice. For example, the first one can be uh, mentioned the two types of listening questions we have gone over this course. And he's talking specifically about the platform. So he's talking about G's and purpose questions or purpose que purpose and G's questions. So that will be um, the answer for number one, G's and purpose questions and purpose and G's questions. So that will be the, the ones that are mentioned in the platform. Type in three words which are used in inference questions. Can, can be imply, infer and suggest right if they tell you that mm -hmm. they are telling you that the, the, you have to infer something right 
you can also I write in I, per, I uh -huh. don't use a, a comma comma Maybe yes my, my, yes. my, my mistake Yes, yeah, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't accept the, the 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 answer without the commas or the periods, right? So in this case, you have to write a comma, infer comma, imply comma, or suggest, right? And the last one, let's see, what does the listening section of the TOEFL test measure? It uh, your ability to understand spoken English, right? That is that will be the answer for number nine, or it measures your your ability to understand spoken English. So that would be the, the answers, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this will be just um, information, extra information that you can use for you to understand the, the test. Do you have any other okay. question with the platform? Alguna otra pregunta? Yes. yes, give me a second, give me a second. Okay. In this case, Okay. Uh, entro a la plataforma teacher y, y le muestro. Okay. Is from the listening part? Mm, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Section three. Is from section two? Sí. But era una era de rellenar que aunque le pusiera cualquier opción me estaba dando siempre errónea. Yes, I had the same problem too. <laughs> yes. 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 Because this is section two, the listening practice. Listening practice. And this is just for you to choose, right? Choose an option. And this one is just for to choose an option also. Let's see the next one. And this is another listening practice. This is just to choose also. A, B, C. So these are these are multiple questions. And let's see. Ahorita que la busco no la encuentro, le tomé foto. Aquí está, listen to practice, uh -huh, practice test one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The number three. Why does the professor say this? So is the listening, uh, the listening practice? Yes. And which one is it? Is number, the number three practice one. the first practice or a practice test? Yes, number is listening practice test one. Test one, okay. 
-huh. And what question is the question? Number three. Number three. One, two, three. Uh -huh. Why does the mm -hmm. professor say mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. She thinks some cause. So eh, you choose any of them and it's incorrect all the time. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Number three. Actually, it doesn't show any of the, it doesn't show an answer. Number three. Okay. So if you choose any of them, yeah, probably that's the problem that we have mm -hmm. a problem there because there is no correct answer selected and that's the problem. You don't, mm -hmm. it is it's incorrect because in any of them it's, it's chosen, right? So let mm -hmm. me see here. Do you have, have you had any other problem, any of you with this part? ¿Alguno ha tenido un problema así también? Yes, teacher. All of you. The same. Yeah. The yes, same the problem. Same. It's only in this question. Okay, so I will report it. Uh, let me write it down. Yes, because it's not, it's not chosen. Okay, so that will be test one. Thank you for letting me know because that is a problem from the platform, right? It's not a problem. There's one question. Three. No answer. No correct answer. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. I will I will report that. But if you finish the rest, I think that you shouldn't have any problem. Okay. If you have a problem with it, just let me know because the rest they have um they have a correct answer. Okay. So sorry for that. Okay, now we are going to finish with the practice for today with the, the listening practice, okay? okay? Okay, perfect. Let me see here. So I'm going to play uh, this audio. We are going to listen to different passages right now. And you will have 30 seconds for you to answer the questions, okay? Are you able to see my screen, Marielos? Yes. Excuse me. Yes, teacher. After okay. Ten minutes. I couldn't see. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So we are going to listen. It says this section measures your ability to understand conversations and lectures. So we will have conversations and lectures in academic uh, setting in English. You will first listen to a passage and then answer questions about it. You may listen to each passage only once. You are allowed to take notes while you listen. You will be asked about the main idea and supporting details from each passage. Sometimes you will be asked to infer meaning and determine the author's purpose. These answers are usually not explicitly ex stated in the passage, but must be answered based on your own ideas in regard to the speaker's attitude, tone, and the context in which one in which he or she is speaking. Most questions are worth one point each. If a question is worth more than one point, it will be indicated in the directions. Answer each question in sequential order. Mm -hmm. You will not be allowed to skip or go back to questions during the actual TOEFL IBT mm -hmm. exam. When you're ready, turn the page to listen to the first passage. Okay, so we are going to listen to it right now. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's start then. Now, listen to a conversation between a student and an advisor. Hi, Mr. Sanders. I know I'm a little early for our meeting, but I figured I'd see if you want to get started anyways. Sure, come on in. Thanks. So tell me, what's going on? You want to apply for a job? Yeah, well, I was thinking that if I don't start working towards paying off my student loans now, I'm going to feel really burdened and strapped for cash after graduation. 
So I was hoping I would be able to join the work study program and get a job on campus. You're a smart student. We can definitely sign you up for the work study program. No problem. Okay, so let me get the form really quickly here. Right. Okay, so the jobs offered in the work study program are only part time. Of course, so you can dedicate enough time to your studies. You can either apply for a job that requires 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week. I suggest you start with a 10 hour a week so you don't overload yourself. Well, I think I'd rather work 20 hours a week. I mean, I want to make money faster and pay off as much of my loans as quickly as possible. Ah, it's good that you're thinking ahead. But considering you're a freshman with a full class schedule, it wouldn't be wise to increase your workload so much. I'm a really hard worker, though. I know I could do it. I'm determined. <laughs> I'm sure you are. But if your grades slip up, you might not qualify again next year for your current scholarship. Well, um, I really wouldn't want that to happen. That would just put me into more debt. Okay, so what exactly do you recommend? I'm going to give you permission to work 10 hours a week in the work-study program. I'll sign this form, and then you will need to take it to the job center, <coughs> and it will help you find a job there. Make sure you let them know it's for a work-study position, since we have jobs reserved for those students. Once you find a job and work for a little bit, see how it goes, and then we can discuss giving you more hours. Okay, sounds like a plan. Thanks for your help. Now, answer the questions. One. Why does the student want to meet with the advisor? Okay, choose uh, an answer now. Yeah. Two, listen again to part of the conversation. Why does Mr. Sanders say this? You're a smart student. We can definitely sign you up for the work study program. No problem. Three, why does the student want to work 20 hours a week? Four, why does Mr. Sanders mention the student's current scholarship? Five, what does Mr. Sanders decide to do to help the student? Okay, perfect. So that was passage one. We are going to passage two, okay? We are going to listen just one time and the answers will be with time, okay? Just for you to have a little bit of pressure. Uh, do you just enter, Miguel? 
Do you just enter to the class? Do you just access? Yes, Miguel, Angel, Ramirez. Uh, take notes because but is is a little notes is okay. word basic is. Pero acaba de entrar a la clase. ¿O ya estaba conectado? Yes, yeah, no, no. Yeah, connect. Okay, okay. So let's listen to passage two, okay? Just listen one time and then answer, okay? okay. Now I'll listen to part of a talk in an astronomy class. Okay, sorry. Uh, these are words that probably sometimes you're going to find in the exam. This is for you to um, understand, or if you don't know it, you can look for it, okay? Gravitational, theony, theory, Uranus, Neptune, heliocentric, and geocentric, okay? Okay, let's listen. All right, so just to quickly pick up where we left off, the ancient Greeks and Romans believed there were seven planets all these were visible to the naked eye. Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Mercury, the Sun, and the Moon. Nowadays, we don't consider the Sun and the Moon planets, but as of right now, we have eight planets in our solar system. Well, nine if you count Pluto as a planet. Anyway, so we have Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Mercury, Earth, and of course, later, Pluto, as I just mentioned, which gives us seven. What two planets are we missing here? Jeff? Uranus and Neptune, I think. That's right. The discovery of the planet Neptune was one of the highest points in the development of gravitational theory. You might remember that most people before this time believed in the geocentric view of the Earth. That is, that the Earth was the center of the universe and that the Sun and the Moon and the rest of the planets revolved around it. And it was Copernicus who first proposed the heliocentric model. That is, that the Earth and the other planets in our solar system revolve around the Sun. Still, it took a couple hundred years for scientists and researchers to eventually change their view and admit that the heliocentric model was and is indeed accurate. Professor, why did it take so long for people to agree with Copernicus? I mean, didn't the heliocentric model make more sense? Of course the other planets don't revolve around the Earth. Well, I think it's natural for us humans to believe we are the center of the universe. But besides that, Copernicus couldn't explain the reason why and how the planets revolved around the sun. The geocentric model had been accepted for over a thousand years. Copernicus couldn't prove his hypothesis. It was just a theory. Now, this is where the hero of the story of the heliocentric model, gravity, comes into play. The motion of the planets had to be explained through some type of mechanism, and that turned out to be gravity. And it's the gravitational pull that eventually helped astronomers understand how the planets revolve around the sun. And that leads us to the discovery of Neptune. Okay, so let's see who did the reading. Can anyone tell me who discovered Uranus? Kim? It was William Herschel in 1781, I think. Well, other people had seen it before, but he was the first to classify it as a planet. And you remembered the year, too. Very nice. Right, so in the decade following its discovery, the orbit of Uranus had been calculated. But there was a problem. Uranus didn't move in the orbit predicted by the theory of gravitational pull. And by 1840, over 50 years after it was called a planet, it was clear that Uranus did not move in orbit according to the one predicted by gravitational theory. In 1843, John Couch Adams, a young Englishman began a detailed mathematical analysis of the motion of Uranus to see whether they might be produced by the pull of an unknown planet. He guessed that there must be a planet more distant from the Sun than Uranus, and then determined the mass and orbit it had to have to account for Uranus's strange orbit. About a month later, an astronomer in Germany started to look for the planet. He quickly found and identified it. It was less than a degree from the position predicted by atoms. The discovery of the eighth planet, now known as Neptune, was a major triumph for gravitational theory because it dramatically confirmed its laws with a great deal of accuracy. This discovery was a major step forward in combining gravitational theory with careful observations. 
Such work continues in our own times with the discovery of planets around other stars. And that leads me to... Now, answer the questions. 1. What is the lecture mainly about? Two, why was Copernicus's heliocentric idea not accepted until hundreds of years later? Three, why was the discovery of Neptune so important? Four, how does the professor organize the lecture? Five, what is the geocentric view of Earth? Six, what is the professor's opinion on the discovery of Neptune? Okay, perfect. We are going to pause a little bit for you to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's it's kind of hard, right? It's kind of hard. Okay, try to write all your questions. Number one, A, number two, A, number three, A, right? Try to, to answer. Is it difficult right now or is it easy? <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of difficult, it's but difficult. Always it's so difficult. difficult. Always <laughs> difficult. But try to take notes. Try to take notes, okay? Just two more, just two more. Solo dos passages más nos quedan y después vamos a ver las respuestas, ¿ok? This okay. one has five passages, pero creo que solo vamos a hacer cuatro. Ok, okay. are you ready? Yeah. Ready. Ok, let's listen yeah. passage three. Now listen to a conversation between a student and a teacher's assistant. Oh, hey, John, you're the TA for Professor Stanton's literature class, right? Yep, that's me. 
I'm actually signed up for that class, but you didn't see me on the first day because I was sick. My friend is in it, though, so she filled me in. I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, did your friend make sure to tell you about the first assignment? Yeah, she did. We have to write a paper on the first couple chapters of our book, right? Yep, that's the one. Well, now that I've run into you, I was actually wondering, you're also the TA for Professor Stanton's Shakespeare class, right? I was thinking of taking that next semester and... Aren't you a freshman? You'll have to wait until next year to sign up for the class. No, I'm a sophomore actually, but I switched my major, which is why I'm just taking Professor Stanton's lit class this year. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Anyways, I was wondering what you think about the class in terms of workload, because I'll be taking extra credits next semester and I don't want to feel overwhelmed, but I also really love Shakespeare. Well, in my opinion, the class is really fun, as I'm sure you've heard, but it's also a lot of work. You need to do a lot of reading or you will quickly fall behind in class. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it sounds like an awesome class, but I'm worried that I wouldn't be able to make the most of it if I'm taking so many other classes. Well, you could always sign up and see how it goes the first two weeks. And if it seems like too much, you could drop the class and just take it next year when you have more time. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. I forgot we had a couple of weeks to make changes to our schedule after the semester starts. If I don't end up taking the Shakespeare class, do you have any other suggestions? Um, I'm not sure. I think you'll just have to research and see what sounds best to you. Sure, that's fine. I'll look into it. Well, thanks for the good idea. I'll be sure to sign up for the class next semester. Cool. I hope you like it. Me too. See you in class next week. Now, answer the questions. 1. What does the student want to talk to the TA about? 2. Why does the TA think the student is a freshman? 3. Why is the student concerned about taking Professor Stanton's Shakespeare class? 4. What does the TA suggest the student do? Select 2. 5. What does the student decide to do at the end of the conversation? Okay, now we're going to listen to passage four, okay? This will be a lecture 
So pay attention and try to take uh, the general ideas, keywords, and try to pay attention, okay? Let's listen to the last one. Now listen, it's part of a talk in a world history class. So it's time for us to move on to the ancient Greeks. Now, this is one of my favorite cultures from the ancient world because it has such a rich history, but we have to be careful. Before launching into the story of the early Greek world, it's important to consider how historians have gathered all of this information in the first place. Modern scholars are obsessed with analyzing primary sources and with good reason, especially when studying Greek history. It's kind of like trying to put together a puzzle where most of the pieces are missing. Well, here, let me explain. The most common sources for Greek history fall within two categories, literary works, which include fiction and nonfiction, and archeological finds. So let's start with the literary side of things. Can anyone tell me one of the most famous books from the ancient world? Well, well, I, I should say it's more of an epic. Yes, Martha. Of course, there are Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. I remember reading them in high school. Yeah, I'm sure you're not alone on that one. Homer's epics are considered essential reading for most students. Now, from a historian's perspective, however, they are quite a headache to interpret. You see, the stories of the Iliad and the Odyssey were originally oral tales told through word of mouth rather than written on paper. The events they described occurred well before they were finally written down by Homer in the 6th century BC. These works most likely do not reflect the society of any particular Greek city-state at any one period, but rather a mixture of places and times. Their value for historians, as a result, rests more on their impact on later Greek culture rather than on providing information about the time that is actually written about. Professor, what about Herodotus? I know many consider him the father of history, but are his works more fiction or nonfiction? Good question, and it's still the subject of much debate. Herodotus mostly described the history of Athens, and from the way he writes, it's clear that he is Athenian and very much concerned with making his culture appear dominant, so it's hard to rely completely on his book Histories, which describes the Persian War. Now, besides Homer and Herodotus, we also have the famous philosophies of Plato and Aristotle. Now, even though all of these texts come from different fields, particularly literature, history, and philosophy, we must still be cautious. Besides believing in the superiority of their own culture, the authors of these sources were men and provide very little evidence of the lives and perspectives of women in the Greek world, except as seen through the eyes of men. Secondly, most of the authors were wealthy individuals, thus their perspective does not reflect that of most citizens and slaves. So, Professor, how can we really trust anything we study about ancient Greece? Well, remember, besides literary sources, there is also, thankfully, archaeological evidence that we can examine and fill in the gaps, so to speak, from the literature. Archaeological sources provide us with key information about different aspects of everyday life in different city-states. For example, in one famous Greek city, archaeologists found that each citizen was given an equal piece of land. Imagine every single person in a city having an equal amount of space. This one simple find shows that the Greeks were interested in city planning and in equality of citizens. Now, papyri, which is kind of like old paper, include private documents like agreements between families before marriages, divorce documents, loans, and village police reports. Cattle theft appears to have been a serious problem in some regions. So my point is that by combining the literary and archaeological sources, historians can complete much more of the puzzle than would have been possible with just the literature. Still, Significant gaps in our knowledge about ancient Greece remains, but that's one of the joys of studying ancient history. We get to play the part of a detective, attempting to reconstruct the history of events based on just a few available clues. Now, let's start our detective work and take a deeper look at the sources around the Trojan War. So, the Trojan War...
Now, answer the questions. One, what is the lecture mainly about? Two, how does the professor organize the lecture? Three, why are Homer's Iliad and Odyssey not ideal sources for learning about ancient Greeks? Four, what does the professor say are some problems with literary sources of ancient Greek history? Select two. Five, why does the professor discuss papyri? Six, what is the professor's attitude towards studying ancient history? Okay, now we finish. We finish the lecture. <laughs> like, finally, <laughs> this is just a test. yes. Don't have phone from us. No, it's <laughs> no, but I know that it's really stressful. It's like tiring, right? Like listening, it's kind of stressful. I, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. I'm laughing. You're with enjoying. You. You're not am, laughing. You're enjoying. I am enjoying the class. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we are going to check right now really quickly uh, the answers, okay? So you will know um, which ones did you have correct. Let's see. So this one is number one, the passage one, right? Why mm -hmm. does the student want to meet with the advisor? What is the answer? Mm -hmm. B. For me, it's letter B. For me, too. I have letter C. For me, C. 
Whatever letter A. <laughs> For me, D. And the answer <laughs> is D. Letter C is correct. Letter C. Okay. Yes, letter C. She wants to sign up for the work study program. I'm okay. wrong again. <laughs> I'm wrong again. But <laughs> let's see. Let's see how, how, how much you have at the end. Let's see. Number two, you will listen again to the part of the conversation. And uh, yes, what is the uh, answer for this one? Letter D. Letter C. Letter C. Letter D. Letter C. <laughs> Oh, letter letter C and letter A, it's okay, both. C or A, both are okay, okay? Yes, yeah, C, it's okay, okay. A is okay. No In problem. my case, it's letter A. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. Let's see number three. Why does the student want to work 20 hours a week? Which one is the, the answer? A, B, C, or D? B. D. D. Okay, D, D. letter D, let's see. It's D, very good, letter D, very good, perfect. Let's see, number four. Why does, sorry, four. Why does Mr. Sanders mention the student current scholarship? A, B, C, or D? B, A, B, A. A. Let's see, C, A, B, C, right? B, B. A. A. It's A, right? Letter A. Okay. To remind the student that it's okay. important to maintain good grades. That's why he uh, scholarship, okay? Scholarship. Number five. Let's see. The last one. What does Mr. Sanders decide to do to help the student? A, B, C, or D? A. 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 A, a very good a exactly letter a he is going to let the student work 10 hours a week let's see with passage number two passage two what is the lecture mainly about this was the lecture about the planets right heliocentric and geocentric so what was the lecture mainly about a b c or d a for me is b a. B. C. For, for me, it's B. 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 C. Let's B. See. <laughs> it's B. It's A. a. Letter a. a. The importance of the discovery of oh. Neptune. Oh. oh, let's see. <laughs> Number two. Let's see. Why was Copernicus' heliocentric idea not accepted until hundreds of years later? A, B, C, or D? A. A. Mm. Let's see. B. A, very mm. good. Copernicus could not explain why the planets revolve around the sun. It was just a, a hypothesis, right? It was just an hypothesis. He didn't prove it. Let's see number three. Why was the discovery of Neptune so important? A, B, C, or D? B. 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 It's B, as in boy, right? Yes. B, because it added further evidence to support the gravitational theory. Very good. Let's see number four. How does the professor organize the lecture? A, B, C, or D? C. 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 It's B. D. Number four, D. 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 Yes. She introduces a problem then provides a solution that's what he says right I'm let's see number again. five <laughs> i'm punching <laughs> number five what is the geocentric view of earth a b c or d c c c, c. C, perfect. Finally, C. one. Earth, yeah, <laughs> finally. See, Earth is the center of the solar system and other planets revolve around it. Very good. And six, what is the professor's opinion on the discovery of Neptune? This was inference, right? B. 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 Letter A. A. I think it's A. A or B, let's A. see. A. 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 A, it's A. A, wow. I got two. Very good. It was <laughs> extremely important discovery for the field of astronomy. Very good, perfect. And improving. Yeah, yes, you're improving, you see. 
<laughs> Let's see passage three. This was another conversation, right? Mm -hmm. What does the student want to talk about uh, to, to, to the TA? A, B, C, or D? D. A. I think it's letter A. 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 Letter A, A. perfect. Yeah. Number yeah. two. A. Why does the TA think the student is a freshman? <laughs> A, B, C, or D? I think D. it's A. letter B. B. It's letter A, again, A. right? A. Professor Stanton's literature class is for freshmen. Let's what is see. a freshman? Freshman is what first year of university. Oh. Ah, you see, that is, I didn't know. and a sophomore that's is a second fresh. year. Yeah, you see, that's what vocabulary. Number okay. three, why is the student concerned about taking Professor Stanton's Shakespeare class? A, B, C, or D? D. B. 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 Very good, B. She is worried it will be too much work. Number four, what does the TA suggest the student do? Select two. Which are the two? I just select one. Select A and A. B. A. Exactly. A. B and C, right? B and C. Sign up B for Shakespeare. I just have one. And take the Shakespeare class another year. Number five, what does the student decide to do at the end of the conversation? A, B, C, or D? C A. 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 Let's see. A. Perfect. Yes. A. She well, decides to sign I up, right? Three. At the end, she will take the class. And mm -hmm. the last one, the one for the Iliad, the Greeks, all of that, right? Papyri. So the first one was what is the lecture mainly about? A, B, C, mm. or D? Mm. A, I think A, it's letter B. B. A, right? Sources A. of historical A. information of ancient Greek. The sources, right? Okay. That was they were talking A. about. Number two, <laughs> how does the professor organize the lecture? A, B, C, or D? C, C, A. B, C, B. I have C. C. It's B, as in boy, right? He introduces the topic, mm. then provides examples. <sighs> Let's see, next one. Three, why are Homer's Iliad and Odyssey not ideal sources for learning about ancient Greeks? Letter D. Letter D. Letter D, very good, very good. They do not reflect a particular time and place in history. Number four, what does the professor say are some problems with literary sources of ancient Greek history? A, B, C, or D? A and B. A and B. A and, A and, B. A and C. C, right? A and C. Very good. Let's see. Five, why does the professor discuss papyri? A, B, C, or D? C, C. C. C right? To okay. provide another example of yeah. archaeological evidence. Mm -hmm. And the last one. What is the professor's attitude towards studying ancient history? This is inference, right? A, B, C, or D? I think it's D. D. It's D. Perfect. Letter D. He likes feeling like a detective and trying to figure out what happened. Perfect. Okay. So, how many points did you do? Did you do a lot of points today? But remember, I do one, have four, four, one, four. four. yes, five, six, Pink eight, points. Seven, I'm eight. really bad. I know. I have four, eight, no, seven, half, seven. I okay, yes. I will send you more information. I will say I will share this information later and I will send you the uh, more books for you to practice and <laughs> prepare for speaking next week. Okay, don't get okay. frustrated. Eso es para que ustedes mismos se vayan midiendo, no para que se pongan tristes, <laughs> no que para que ustedes se vayan midiendo y qué es lo que pueden hacer. Okay, I can see the light to the end of the tunnel. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. You see, if you practice more, you will better in everything. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, okay? okay. I will see you next week and take right. rest. Have a nice weekend. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye